Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon as per your respective time zone. On behalf of entire EVSIS managed services team, we'd like to welcome you all to 22C Supply Chain Management Advisory Webinar Session. This important session is to keep you fully synchronized with the new features and functionalities as a part of this quarter release which Oracle provides. My name is Hardik Patel and I'm an Operations Manager here at EVSIS Managed Services Department Today, I'm your host for this session, and I'm glad to introduce my colleague, Rashi Sharma, who's part of our vast supply chain team at Evosis Mystic. Today, she'll take us through all the procurement and advanced procurement updates for this 22C quarter cool release. Today's session is planned for around 45 to 60 minutes max, and we'll make sure that we also leave some time to answer any questions you may have. We also have a panelist online with us, so if you do have any questions during the session, so please do write to us through a question panel or a chat panel. We'll be happy to answer them as well. Before we move to the Q&A, let's have a quickly look at the important disclaimer. would like to convey you our approach towards the Oracle updates in a very simpler method. So we'll be taking you through vital analysis for the 22C updates done by our experts, which will help you incorporate new features and updates as you into your system. We'll also sync you on any bugs or known issues if there are any. It's good to have an interactive session, so please do ask questions through chat or question panel as discussed. This is to give you a glimpse on how we have crafted the structure of this session. So the first thing what you see is list of new features coming in 22C, detailing on features so you get brief understanding on what new features are all about. And the next one is business benefits, an important takeaway for US decision maker. There are four important components um, wherein we have done in-depth analysis. The first one is impact level analysis, which demonstrates the impact on end user. If it's a low impact, then regression testing can be avoided. If it's a high impact, then we need to offer regression testing. The second one, which is we all are aware that there are some features which are by default auto-enabled by Oracle, and there's some which we need to opt for. And the third one highlights the nature of the feature. There would be certain configuration which may be required and some can be used without any changes. And the last one, which is a quick win, this term we use simply to convey you that what is ready to use by investing minimum amount of time and what requires significant amount of time and efforts to make use of this feature. Before I hand it over to my colleague, uh, we've got a very, very, very quick question for you. On the scale, which industry does your organizing belongs to? If you can help us with the poll, please. Really, really appreciate for your feedback on this. I'll be closing the poll in the next five seconds, and then Rashi will unmute herself, and she'll take you through today's session on procurement. Thank you. Rashi, the uh, stage is all yours. You can go ahead. Thank you. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Hi, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Vashi Sharma. I am currently working as an associate SCM consultant at Evosis, based here in the UK. So welcome, everyone. I will be delivering today's presentation. So let's begin today's presentation. So we've divided this session in four different areas. I will go into more depth of these four different areas very shortly. But first, let's have a look at the analysis of the latest, latest features in 22C update. You can see we have 30 new features in the SCM area. A large chunk of it it's, of its quick wins that requires no configurations, followed by no quick wins. And lastly, standing head to head, there are quick wins opt-ins and quick wins that do require configurations. So as mentioned earlier, we have divided this session in four different areas. So firstly, 
So quick wins, this means that it doesn't take a lot of time for any users to perform a process onto the system. As a user, you always expect an easier, quicker way to do things. Quick win features requires minimum amount of effort when putting the feature into use. Next is not quick wins. Consequently, not quick wins features take longer to configure the features and takes a lot of effort. Quick wins are divided into three different parts. There are quick wins that are with configurations, there are quick wins that are without configurations, and lastly, we have quick win opt-ins, which means features that have to be opted into. So, before we get into the depth of the session, um, let's just focus on the impact analysis, which is just here on the right-hand side. This helps us to identify the effect that it creates on different elements. The impact analysis box will appear on each and every slide of the feature while I'll be demonstrating this presentation. So, as you can see, this is one of the features that um, is part of the 22C, which is use the delivered to inventory organization time zone when fulfilling uh, supply chain demand. So now with this feature, you can use time zone specified on the inventory organization for driving the local time zone for delivery and shipping locations. In this feature, Oracle order management, back-to-back -back sales order, back-to-back -to -back sales orders, supply planning, and manufacturing can communicate the requested delivery or shipping dates to procurement in the time zone of the deliver to ship and to ship to organizations. This is extremely beneficial as it makes sure that the requested dates on the purchase requisitions aren't old or in the past dates as per the time zone specified in the delivered to organization in the upstream applications. Using this feature, the requested dates on purchase requests from external application and those entered manually in UIs will be validated to ensure that they aren't past dates as per the current date in the time zone of the delivered to organization. Also, the delivery of the ship dates on related purchase orders will affect the ship to location local time zone. This feature links many different modules together from procurement to manufacturing to order management. As you can see, the impact level is medium, need to enable and configuration are a yes. And lastly, the main question, is it a quick win? Yes, it is. Moving on to our next feature, which is quick win opt-ins. This feature is, I know this is uh, based on the uh, US, but um, just out of interest, we've also included this um, in the presentation. So assign US federal attributes on purchase orders for government-wide treasury account symbol adjusted trial balance system and data act reporting. As you are aware that purchase order attributes are required for order headers, schedules, and distributions. These attributes will be supported as global descriptive flex field attributes at the order header, schedule, and order distribution level. These attributes need to be defaulted, populated, and validated for orders entered manually or created by import processing. The content must be validated and revalidated when the transaction is submitted for an approval. This specific feature provides the capability this is uh, which requires the attributes on a purchase order either created manually or imported that are needed for government-wide treasury account symbol, adjusted trial balance system, and data act reporting. In terms of the impact analysis, the impact level is low. Do we need to enable? Yes, we do. Is there any configuration involved? No. And lastly, is it a quick win? Yes, it is a quick win. So moving on to the next part of the presentation, which focuses on features which are not quick, win, not quick wins. This feature is integrate and extend procurement using REST services. In this update, Oracle procurement and Oracle SSP procurement deliver new modified REST APIs to enable simplify integration with external systems. The new REST API in, introduced in this system uh, in this update is browsing categories. 
First, we will look at the purchase requisitions and then we'll focus on the purchase orders. So post and patch are enhanced to accept requested delivery date in the local time zone of inventory organization. Post and patch are supported for justification at header level, not to the buyer, not to the supplier, not to the receiver, and at the line level. We also focus on requisitioning process processing requests. Post is enhanced to support adding back-to-back -back requisition lines to open purchase orders. And now we'll focus on the REST API for enhancing purchase orders, which is the GET is supported for US federal attributes. Now moving on to the next feature. View work confirmation summary in order life cycle. You can now see work confirmations in the order life cycle for progress payment schedules. In the previous update, which was 22B, the purchase order life cycle and schedule life cycle pages could only show details of the receipt generated from an approved work confirmation. Now, in our latest feature, 22C update, these pages now show additional information such as work performed in the current period, work approved in earlier periods, total work completed, and remaining balances for progress payment schedules. These details are also available on the view order page. This will really help users. Focusing on to the next feature, configure sender name and email in the supplier management notifications. So it's extremely important for your suppliers to trust notifications that are coming from your account, from your um, Oracle procurement application. So what you have to do is you have to configure from and a reply to email address for supplier onboarding and profile management notification. Supplier contacts will recognize them as coming from your organization. Setting the sender email helps avoid registration related notifications landing in the spam folder of new suppliers. It also enables you to monitor out of office emails from suppliers by, re by receiving auto replies and bounce back emails if delivery to a supplier contact isn't successful. These are the following list of notifications we can configure. Supplier registration approved, supplier registration rejected, supplier registration saved for later, supplier registration request to resubmit, and a new supplier notification for a new essay. This latest feature will help both parties communicate with each other in a much more effective way. Similarly, our next feature also is configure sender, sender name and email in sourcing notifications. However, this time it, it is in sourcing uh, process. So alerting category managers is critical so that they can reach out to alternative supplier contacts to ensure invitations are communicated so suppliers can submit their bids on time. Sometimes, due to circumstances, one supplier contact is not enough. This way, it will really help the category managers to reach out to different contacts, which can help suppliers and the business itself. Then the notifications by, sent by the application must also identify the organization and the category manager who is initiating these emails. This feature will allow the form, the form, and the, the form and reply to email address as category manager's email, or a generic email if you don't wish to expose category manager's details, so they're recognized as coming from your organization. You can then monitor out of office emails and bounce back emails from suppliers by receiving auto replies. As a category manager, you can then take follow up action for time sensitive supplier notifications like supplier invitation or negotiation award. Similarly, capability is also available for supplier contacts who don't have a user account but a valid email address on or for suppliers invited using additional email address. So just focusing on these screenshots. And looking at our next feature. Again, send invitation email to supplier contacts with no user account. So some supplier contacts may not have a supplier portal user account as they may be new and not an onboarded um, to a supplier portal. 
If such supplier contacts are invited into negotiation without specifying an additional email, then the negotiation invitation isn't sent. Now, if you invite a contact who doesn't have a supplier portal user account, the contact will receive the negotiation email along with the PDF. These suppliers can then submit their quotes offline and the category manager can use the surrogate response functionality to report their responses. Or if the supplier contacts receive their user accounts, they can submit their quotes directly into the supplier portal. This now will help businesses get full capacity of their responses. Businesses not will be restricted in terms of responses that they get. Now this focus, uh, this feature is specifically focusing on the wider scope. Focusing on to our next feature. This is just a screenshot of um, the demonstration that I gave on the previous feature. And moving on to our next feature. So our next feature is access initiatives using deep links. New deep links provide direct access to initiatives without having to navigate through menu structure. You can use these links in business intelligence reports as well as third party application pages. When adding deep links to reports or third party application pages, users simply click on the link uh, of the initiative they wish to open in Oracle Fusion Cloud Procurement without any additional navigation links. When clicking a deep link, the user security assignment is honored. That is, users can access application pages only if they're assigned a job role that allows them the access. As discussed before, this feature has been updated for supplier sourcing and also now we will focus on the supplier qualification and notifications. Configure sender name and email in the supplier qualification notifications. Qualification managers communicate with suppliers through notification emails sent by the application throughout the supplier qualification process. These are time sensitive notifications such as respond to questionnaires or response resubmission required, which need to get delivered to your suppliers. Now you can configure onto the system from and reply to name and email address on supplier notifications. This way they're recognized as coming from your organization and don't get stuck in, stamp, uh, in spam folders. Setting up the form and reply to email address also enables you to monitor out of office emails on suppliers receiving auto replies, as well as bounce emails if delivery to supplier contact isn't successful. This reduces potential delays or any miscommunications on time, sen time sensitive supplier qualification notifications. Just gonna have a look at the screenshot over here of the feature that we've just discussed. And moving on to our next feature, Notify when contracts are shared in the supplier portal. In the procurement contracts module, users can easily notify their suppliers for their review. Now contract managers can notify suppliers when they share their contract, uh, when they share their contract for a review. The share externally checkbox on the edit contract page indicates if the contract is already shared. To share a contract, you can use the share in supplier portal action from the edit contract page. This can help both parties to go ahead with the process without any delays being restricted. As you can see the impact analysis as well, the impact level is medium, do we need to label yes, configuration is also involved and is this a quick win? Moving on to our next feature. Notify when contracts are shared in the supplier portal. So the share in supplier portal action from search results. On the search contract in the supplier portal page, you can preview documents you're about to share in addition to the contract and edit notification you are sending to your supplier contract. By previewing the documents, users can go back and check on any issues or any mistakes they have made to go back and rectify anything and any errors that they've made.
looking at the next feature. Use a docu design OYT 2.0 uh, authentication when signing contracts. So you can now sign contracts electronically with this feature. When you sign a contract, the process uses the OYT 2.0 authentication when the envelope is submitted to DocuDesign. When you first sign a contract with this feature, you will be redirected to DocuDesign after selecting the sign action to provide one-time consent to use the integration between Oracle Enterprise contracts and DocuDesign. Now we'll focus on the quick wins that require no configuration. This latest feature focuses on an add new approved back-to-back -back requisitions to open purchase orders. Add a new approved back-to-back -back purchase requisition lines to existing open purchase orders you can now add a back-to-back -back requisition line to an existing open purchase orders instead of creating a separate purchase order for the requisition. In the 20A feature update, um, requisition lines type back-to-back -back sales orders couldn't be added to existing open purchase orders. Now, in this update, the, this restriction is lifted. This will really help users in terms of time efficiency before it was a long-winded process. Now this latest feature will help the users to go directly into the requisition page and add lines to the purchase orders of their choice. As you can see the impact analysis, it's in a medium impact um, level. Do we need to enable? Yes. Is there any configuration required? No. Is it a quick win? Yes, it is a quick win. Moving on to our next feature. Update base price according to the unit of measurement conversions. Before the update of 22C, if you change the unit of measurement for an item, which the unit of measurement conversion was defined, the system didn't reflect on the change in the base price. But now, the resulting price was calculated accurately. After you update to 22C, when you change the unit of measurement for an item and a unit of measurement conversion exists, the system recalculates and updates the base price according to the defined unit of measurement con uh, conversion rate. Looking at the impact analysis, this is a very low impact level. Do we need to enable? No, we don't. Is there any configuration required? And a massive quick win. Focusing on our next features, on our next feature, prevent non-negotiated emergency requisitions from bypassing approvals. Before update of 22C, you can, if your procurement business unit was configured to bypass approvals for automatically submitted orders created from negotiated requisitions, POs you created from emergency requisitions that weren't negotiated also were also bypassing approvals. After you update to 22C, touchless POs created from non-negotiated emergency requisitions won't bypass approvals. So as you remember on the requisitions page, there was an emergency PO number generate option. It created it, its own purchase orders, but now this issue has been resolved as it will comply with the bypassing approvals and it won't be an issue for bypassing. Focusing on our next feature, validate delivered to location upon PO submission. Before the latest feature, you could submit POs without specifying a delivered to location for each distribution. Now, you must provide a delivered to location to submit the purchase orders for approval. This can really help users to check on any mistakes or errors they have made, and they can go back and rectify those errors. As you can see, the impact analysis, the impact level is low. Do we need to enable? No. Is there any configuration involved? No. And it's a quick win. Focusing on our next feature, document history captures wrong name for PO cancellation. In prior updates, 
whenever a purchase document was cancelled, the document history incorrectly recorded the original creator of the purchase document as the person who cancelled the document. Now, after the latest feature, the document history correctly records and reflects the name of the person who performed the document cancellation. This next feature this next feature states performance improvements to the buyer, list of values, UI widget. To address performance issues, the buyer list of values is now a list of values on the UI pages. You can create PO or create PAs. You can edit PO or edit PAs, import orders, import blanket agreements, import contract agreements. You can reassign purchase purchasing documents you can configure procurement business function. You can communicate purchasing documents. So in manage orders or manage agreements, there were performance issues in um, when it came to widgets. It's user specific, but now it's been resolved. Looking at our next feature, allow deletion and cancellation of draft work confirmation. Before the latest feature, you couldn't delete lines from a withdrawn or rejected work confirmation. You can also cancel a rejected work confirmation. Now, after the latest update, you can delete lines from withdrawn or rejected work confirmations and cancel a rejected work confirmation. Our next feature includes configure units of measurement by mapping the same source of unit of measurement to different unit of measurement codes from source suppliers. At times, the same source unit of measurement may refer to different unit of measurements for different suppliers in Oracle Cloud. Now, you can optionally specify the source supplier when defining the unit of measurement mapping using a free text field. While importing the external purchase prices, the unit of measurement mapping role where the source supplier is specified is given descendants over the mapping row without a supplier. As you can see, this is the supplier's unit of measurement. And we've got our own unit of measurement. And focusing on the impact analysis, the impact level is quite low. Need to enable no. Is there any configuration involved? No. And it is a quick one. Now our next feature includes Manage different external purchase prices for the same manufacturer part number from different manufacturers by treating them as different manufacturer part numbers. It is impossible that if two different manufacturers had the same manufacturer part numbers, if they could be referring to two different completely items in Oracle Cloud. Now, with the latest update, external purchase lines with the same manufacturer part number when belonging to different manufacturers will be treated as different parts. An external purchase price will be selected for the combination of manufacturer, manufacturer part number, and unit of measure for requisition for each requisition business unit and a purchase agreement line will be created for selected lines. You can now optionally specify the manufacturer when manufacturer when defining the purchase purchasing category mapping. While importing the external purchase prices, the purchasing category mapping row where the manufacturer is specified is given precedence over the mapping role without a manufacturer. So the manufacturer partner number, we can maintain the same number for two different items. Important point to note here is that first there was uniqueness and now there is no uniqueness. Sticking up the screenshot over here. And you can see the impact analysis. The impact level is low need to label and configuration is low, uh, is no, and is this a quick win? Yes, it is. Our next feature includes import supplier part numbers for external purchase prices with item number, even without defining a trading partner relationship. Include supplier part number in purchase agreement lines containing item number. 
Now, with the latest update, it is no longer mandatory to have a training partner relationship defined between the item and the supplier part number for external purchase price line. With the item number in case a supplier part number was specified in their interface. You can import such external purchase price lines even without defining a trading partner relationship. The supplier part numbers when passed in the interface will be visible to both external purchase prices and purchase agreements for all type lines. You can also import such external purchase price lines even without defining a trading partner relationship. The supplier part numbers when passed in the interface will be visible in both external purchase prices and purchase agreement line for all type lines. Our next feature includes configure the supplier site mapping for source supplier by assigning the source supplier value to multiple different supplier sites where the supplier sites belong to different procurement business units. While importing external purchase price, the, uh, the procurement business unit in the supplier site mapping row is now matched with the procurement business unit in the interface data to derive the supplier site. You can now define multiple roles with, a, with the same source supplier with different procurement business units, thereby avoiding any creations of duplicate vendor records in the source system where the supplier is used more than one procurement business unit. Our next feature includes derive line type from configure procurement business function setup. Derive line type for purchase, purchase agreements created by external purchase prices from the default line type defined in the configuration in the configure procurement business function task. The task in the setup and maintenance area is part of the procurement offering in the procurement foundation functional area. Now with this, uh, with this update, you will be able to de determine line type used for purchase agreements created from the external purchase uh, prices. Our next feature includes review purchase orders impacted by mass re replacement. When you mass replace unfilled per purchase order lines, it is important to know that purchase order lines get impacted. The attributes that change, new order purchase lines that get created in this process. With this update, you can review this information on the replacement details page after a mass replacement is performed. The replacement details will have two new sections, replacement POs and reinstatement POs. These sections will show purchase order lines that have undergone mass updates during the replacement phase and reinstatement phase, respectively. And we'll just look at the next feature. So, on this page, you can review attributes like document number, supplier number, order quantity, purchasing unit of measurement, and unit price derived from PO line during the mass replacement against the original purchase order line attributes. You can also view the replacement action taken against each PO line as an historical reference. Any exception for a PO line during the mass replacement is highlighted against the respective PO line to indicate that the change isn't implemented on that line. With a summarized view, you can also review the purchase orders that are impacted by mass replacement. You can also track the replacement actions taken by against each PO line and attributes changed on the purchase order lines as part of the mass update. Our next feature includes maintaining multiple suppliers' emails for communications for purchase orders. Now, as you are aware, that in the previous, uh, previous features, you could only add one email. Now, suppliers offer require purchase orders to be emailed to multiple contracts. However, manually adding the supplier email addresses on each purchase order can be an error to form, which risks supplier communication and limits touchless buying goals. Maintaining the multiple supplier email receipts on supplier sites for communicating purchase order automates the process. The correct emails are automatically added to the purchase order when created, no manual intervention. 
Now, this results in a very seamless communication of new orders to suppliers, thereby reducing the fulfillment delays and improving transaction efficiency. You can add multiple email addresses for supplier sites using the edit supplier site page, supplier site import, and supplier rest service when email is set as the communication method for the site. You can use commerce to also separate multiple email addresses. Our next feature includes notifications will not be sent to locked out suppliers. Now, suppliers cannot be removed once you've invited them, but they can be locked out, so they cannot see the responses to the negotiation. Currently, a locked out supplier receives some notifications during the negotiation process. Now, with this change, the negotiation lifecycle notifications such as false resume, close date changes, or amendments won't be sent to the suppliers if they are locked out. Now, these notifications are resumed if the supplier is unlocked from the monitor supplier activities page. Our next feature focuses on the apply application limits for large initiatives. Limits are now enforced on the number of suppliers, internal responders, and qualifications that can be added to initiatives to address performance issues. Some of the volume limits enforced on supplier qualification initiatives are maximum number of suppliers you can add to initiative are 400, maximum number of internal responders you can add for each supplier survey initiatives are 25, maximum numbers of qualification as an initiative can generate 2000. One thing to note and remember is the number of qualification equals the number of supplier times, the number of qualification areas. We can split the supplier and create a new initiative when you need to create more than 2000 qualifications. Focusing on our next feature, which is create a new data set from an existing one. It's very easy when you have um, an already updated data set and you can use it for the new one. It's quite good for time efficiency. So all you do is you copy an existing data set to create a new data set. This action is available for user generated data sets and not for seeded data sets, such as requisitions, POs, invoices, and expenses. expenses. This reduces the effort that would otherwise be sending uploading using the FBDI template. Additionally, you can now also edit the purpose of existing data sets from the data sets tab. Here are a list of points. You can create a copy of an existing data set. In data set menu options, click on copy. You can enter the name and select the purpose of the new data set and click create. Once the process of creating the new data set is completed, you can see it in the list of data sets by refreshing the configurations page. Click on the edit icon to change the purpose of the data set. Copy data set. Save time during initial configuration and during iterative improvement of of the knowledge base. Also, you simplify edit feature to change the purpose of the data set. As you can see, this is the screenshot of the new data set from an existing one. And focusing on the impact analysis, as the impact level is medium, do we need to enable or configure? No. Is it, is it a quick win? Yes, it is. Focusing on our next feature, which is track progress of the classification process per batch. Estimate the time in which classification process is expected to be completed. The batch summary now will show you a visual percentage indicator that refreshes periodically to track progress of classification processes, as you can see here. Our next feature includes create focused sample training sets. Now you can create focus sample training sets with create sample training set action. The filters for transaction dates, business unit provide a guide, guided flow of creating a sample training set with the clear indicators and helpful default and advanced settings. And our last feature, determine the batch source and transaction period within a batch. Use the timestamps of the earliest and latest records that are now available in the batch details to help you determine the time period of transactions in a batch. The name of the data set is from, the, which, from which batch it was created and also available as part of the batch details. 
I think this is the end of our presentation. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. And now I will be forwarding on to Kartik. Hey, Rashi, that was a wonderful insight from you. Uh, thank you so much for patiently listening to us, um, the audience. And before, I mean, we won't take much of your time now. Just before we go to q and we'd like to note down your area of interest, whether it's technology innovation, managed services, value-based analytics, which is adding let's say, value to many of our resources clients, or client 4.0. If you also need any one-to-one -one session or information, any of these, please do write, reach out to the project managers. Also, the service manager, which is new layer added um, into the system now. Meanwhile, we'll check if there's any question. Um, that, there was a there was a question. Um, I think. Can we please confirm, Sachin, that that has been answered on the question panel there is a question has it been answered if you can please reconfirm or if you do have it um, any question you can ask us now or you can even ask us at the later stage by writing it to um, project managers and uh, we'll get in touch with you and again before you leave us we'd like to tell you that we'll be sending you the presentation along with the um, uh, the recording in in few days time and we have this upcoming sessions um, next week, um, which is supply chain inventory and order management. So any of the team members would like to be part of it, please do please do register. HCM sessions we have. We also have a dedicated session project portfolio management, uh, PPM this time. And uh, so that's the schedule. And um, we'll be sending you this PDF presentation again, as I said. And if you before you leave us, would you mind telling us that how we did in today's session so that we can improve based on your feedback on the scale of one to five. Um, there is a question there. Um, so we'll be taking that up before closing the webinar. You'll see an answer right there. And um Bardic, uh, we will uh, answer uh, uh, after the seminar and uh, send it to uh, project manager. Okay, perfect. So this is to keep you informed that um, that Chad Aller, you've you've uh, sent the question. We'll be getting in touch with you. We'll be um, arranging your answer with the help of project manager without fail. Also, can you please confirm that um, Megan's uh, question has been answered? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, and uh, I'll be full now. And just uh, the very last question that, uh, if you can tell us that, were you, have you attended any of the previous advisory sessions? This last one, we won't trouble you more. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, we really appreciate for your time today. And um, yeah, thank you once again all for your valuable time to be part of this important session. And please do register uh, for the upcoming inventory and order management. Thank you so much. We'll be closing the poll. And um, now we are, we'll be closing the session today and again we'd like to appreciate everyone for today's session today's presence thank you so much everyone thank you once again